afternoon, youth. Uh, good afternoon to adults. If you wanna. Yeah. If you want to be a youth, come in. <laughs> if you want to stay and feel youthful, come into the hall. Okay, so um, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, youth. So if you're not doing anything there, over there, please come inside the hall. We will start our song service. We'll make it a fun song service. Youth, are you ready? It feels so empty today that there aren't any kids. Where are the kids? All of them. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start our AOI program now. But before that, we'd like to start our program with a prayer. Ati Chari, would, would you like to pray for our AOI program? Low, low, low. Okay. <laughs> okay, shall we bow down our heads as we start our AY? Let's all pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thanks so much for this um, wonderful Sabbath day and us. We start our AY service. May you um, be with us and Central Angels to sing with us. Thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So again, we're inviting those who are outside to come join us now as we start our AY program. Hello. Hello. Okay, for our first song, um, does everybody know this song over and over? If not, we'll learn it today. And there's actions involved with it as well. We'll learn the song first, then we'll do the action later. Over the other side. Me. 
For our next song, it's another um, action song, but I'd request everybody to form in a circle, in a big circle, if that's possible. Uh, the song is called This, this is, is the Day. day. Everybody in a big circle. Your hands over the shoulder of your per the person in front of you. Okay, so are you familiar with this next song, I Look Down the Road and I Wonder? Remember in camping? I look down the road and I wonder how far I am from God. So I buckled up my shoes and I started. Okay, so we'll start with I look down the road and I wonder.
lot more next time. So, uh, so the two back row seats over there is going to be milk and honey. The seats over here is going to be... One second, sorry. Alright, so the row... Um, what is it? The rows here... So the two back rows are going to be Milk and Honey. The rows here is going to be um, singing the he Heavenly Choir. Um, Dana and Sarah is going to be... Sit at the feet of Jesus. Sit at the feet of Jesus. And then CJ onwards to the back is going to be... All God's children are going to sit together. All God's children are going to sit together. All God's children are going to sit together. So um, who, what was yours there at the back? Milk and Honey. Going to Phil's... Feast. Feast. Going to feast on milk, <laughs> milk and, and honey. honey. And then feast on milk and honey. Remember, we're going to feast on milk and honey. And then those are the two back rows. Um, from Auntie Jane forward will be sing in the heavenly choir. Yours is I'm going to sing in the heavenly choir. Yeah, so your row and forward will be I'm going to sit at the feet of Jesus. And, and then be behind you and backwards will be all God's children going to sit together. And everyone is going to sing, um, sit at the welcome table. I'm going to sit at the welcome table. So this song is, I'm going to sit at the welcome table. I'm ready to sing. I'm gonna sit at the welcome table. I'm gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days. Hallelujah. I'm gonna sit at the welcome table. Sit at the welcome table one of these days. One more time. Sing that again. I'm going to sit at the welcome table.
Opening song, let's all stand and not not stand. Just sing, let's all sing, lean forward, lean backward. Let's bow our heads for opening prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for this wonderful Sabbath we have. And help us in our AY today. And uh, help us keep healthy and sorry for our sins. In our pray. Amen. Okay. Good afternoon, church. I give my biggest thanks to our choristers, Zebi, Shalei, Joy Joy, Vishal, and Chari, and our pianist, Tita Jagi, and Lance, too, with the opening prayer. As our, I think is our second, second topic, and AY for the love series made, made by the youth, this topic focuses on, as you can see, long distance relationship, a test in faith, trust, and patience. I took this because, you know, oh, I don't need to explain it. Okay, okay, that's fine then, that's fine. Okay, next slide. Okay, next slide. 
The next, the first, let's look at the, let's look at the, both the earthly definition and say the Bible definition. For the first is the abbreviation for long distance relationship. You know the teens have referred to this as LDR. Another word for that is sepanx or separation anxiety. Mm -mm -mm. But you didn't know that? <laughs> I'm sure you have, I'm sure you have, I'm sure you've heard of, I'm sure you've experienced some sort of LDR as I will explain later on. Um, the, first, the first definition that I have here written top down is the earthly definition. The definition of a romantic relationship between two people who live far apart and so are unable to meet on a frequent basis. Now this, this definition obviously is the, is the definition that pops up into mind if you think of LDR. But there are, I thought, well, there are many other um, types of long distance relationships. These, these are the definitions of, say, family, um, long distance relationships, friends, long distance relationships, even, even objects or items. Um, I'm sure all of us have experienced long distance relationship right now as all of us, I'm assuming, were, were born in the Philippines and most of our relatives are either halfway across the world or in the other side in America. So we all have experienced long distance relationship. But this, ain't, this isn't the only um, experience because our relationship with God could be classed as a long distance relationship as well. The one here for the Bible definition I have is our relationship with our Heavenly Father. And I will use the story of Jacob's 14 year perseverance waiting for Rachel. Let's go on to the, to the first subtopic, which is trust and faith. These two go hand in hand. These two, these just trust and faith is very vague. It can be used to describe and to um, describe any, any, any topics and any feelings whatsoever. And definitely in a relationship, this is very important. The text that I have here written down from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. I will start by explaining trust and faith in an LDR from a human, human to human side of the of a point. It says here, getting one tip is to getting to know your partner. You need to be confident in your knowledge of love and for your partner in order to build a relationship that you can both believe in. Learn how to understand your partner, how to interpret what she says or he says and pick out her or his emotional states. You should be able to tell when something's bothering him or her and know what makes her or him feel better. This is obviously through personal experience and I'm sure nearly all of you will know this as well. The second one here is commit to the relationship. Discuss, discuss topics like what you want to get out of the relationship and where you see it going. Commit to the trust and communica communication that sustain a long distance relationship. Understand the difficulties you will face and talk about them with your partner. But at the end of the day, if the relationship is going to work, you both need to fully dedicate yourself to it without hesitation. This is especially very, very difficult as um, this kind of thing will be much easier if you see that, that beloved person face to face. So doing it, say, in a, in a, web, in a web screen or a screen in a TV is much, is much difficult. The next one, I think, for me, is the most, one of the most important is be reliable. Encourage your partner to trust you by always proving yourself worthy of his or her trust. Follow through on your promises, even the small ones like calling her or him at a specific time or responding to a message. If you ever find that you can't follow through, a, through on a promise, have a very good reason why, ex, why. Explain this to him or her and ask for, don't demand it, ask for forgiveness. So lower your pride down especially the boys, because normally they, they, we are the impatient ones. Be open 
to your partner. Honest and open communication is just as important as talking often. If something is worrying you, your partner should be the first one to know. If she's feeling upset or frustrated, she or he should be comfortable enough to open up to you. If you are consistently open with your partner, she will learn to trust what you say and will feel more comfortable in the relationship. Be completely honest with your partner and trust that and she will with, with you. Be, be, um, be, be, be just laughing because um, sometimes our tendency is we like, to, we like to keep things to ourselves in, to the point where we don't, we don't want to bother the, our partner with our problems. And that, that kind of mindset may be good for you, but not good for the partner, as the partner would like to know um, what bothers you. And that, and that has always been my problem with opening up to Via. So bear with me. I hope, I hope this is relatable to everyone, not just the teens, but the adults as well. Um, oh, this one, this one. This is the last one. Get to know your partners, friends, and family. Now... <laughs> now, ex now, experience from the past is that um, when I started in this whole relationship thing like, properly, I never, I never actually knew that you had to formally ask the the partner's parents if they had permission to 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 court um, his or or her daughters. I never knew that, um, and I think. How we are like I don't know three three years and six months now, I think that good that one good start has made made life much easier for especially for me as the only boy with like there's four girls plus my sisters that's that's plenty of females and then I'm the only boy. <laughs> so advi advice for the young ones growing up especially the boys always I know it's very scary but always ask the the uh, partner's fa um, family, especially the parents. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> now, now these subtopics, um, these, are, these are little tips and advices on what to do. But these are just advices and tips. So I would, I would like to call to the Jagi uh, to have a testimony, an actual personal <laughs> testimony about trust and faith. Yes. Oh, wh whoever, whoever is next week's topic, you can ask Tito Laverne. <laughs> okay, ready to start? Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. It's been a while since I have spoken um, during Adventist Youth Program in the afternoons. I would take this as a pleasure and an honor, although uh, um, RV only messaged me this morning. And Tita, I have a deal. <laughs> a few weeks ago, I asked him a favor, but he said he doesn't have the guts or the confidence to do it. But then... This morning, he sent me a message. He said, Tita, I have a deal. I will do what you ask if you're going to give a testimony about LDR this afternoon. Obviously, I didn't say no. I said yes straight away. And I said, but when is it? He said, today. Sorry for the short notice, Tita. <laughs> but anyway, um, I could much relate to long-distance relationship. And I would love for RV to, to do the favor I've asked him. So this is a great opportunity and a blessing for me as well. Um, to those who doesn't know, but I think most of you know that Vern, majority of our relationship, Vern and I has been in a long distance relationship. We were never really together, not until we got married. So just a brief um, history, we, we, acquaint, we got acquainted with each other when we were in high school. Uh, I believe that was third year? Third year. Third year high school. So what year is that equivalent here? 15 years old, yeah. We, but well, we met each other when we were 15 years old. Um, we went to Davao City, which where he resides. 
um, because our Philippine uh, Philippine military training, it's like pathfindering, but more like a military training in the Philippines, which you do when you are 15, 16 years old, had a retreat there. So he first saw me in church. So that's where we began. Um, her, His eldest sister and my eldest sister were childhood friends, but then we were not born yet. So our family knew each other. Um, and so we were introduced by his cousin, and it all started there. We started being pen pals. So there was no texting yet, so just pen pals. And then when, when cell phones um, came, we started being text mates. So um, I wouldn't discuss everything in detail what happened in the past, but we had a long courtship, about 10 years. 10 years, yes. It was about 10 years. <laughs> It was because it was it was difficult for me because we never really got together. So it's really difficult to say yes to someone who you don't really know in person. Although I was attra we were attracted, I would say, physically to each other. But because uh, when I was younger, I always believed that you just don't go into a relationship just because you want to have a relationship. You know, for me, it is an investment of your emotion, of your time, of your money. And you just don't want to invest those things for fun. So I always took it seriously. So I thought, I'm not going to just go into a relationship just because so I'll be in a relationship. So it took 10 years. So eventually I was already here in, in the UK. So we started as pen pals. And then after that, we be became text mates. And things, you know, didn't work out well. Um, but then when I was here in the UK... Thanks to Facebook, we managed to communicate again. And I felt this time, hmm, I think I'm, I'm talking to a different person, a more mature, a more mature person. So, okay, this is, this is interesting. So, we, we started to communicate again. But then, obviously, at that time, I was also communicating, you know, how will you say this? Um, I've got other friends. Yes. So, but then, you, you know, it, 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 it does happen. It does happen in, in reality. And you, I, I took that as an opportunity. It's not the collect and select thing because I was not collecting. <laughs> but it was getting to know each person and actually thinking who will be the right person for me. Before I said yes to, to Kuya Laverne, um, it so happened that I came here in July 2010. Um, I think we started communicating around August. And around that time, my brother and, um, decided to uh, marry his fiance. So in March the following year, they've asked me to come home for the wedding. And the wedding was in Davao City, where he was. So we met again, although before I went home, we were, we were communicating, you know, Skyping or texting messaging in, in Facebook. And at that time, I was still half-hearted about it because there was also this other friend that, that I know from, from the university. And, you know, I had to, I really pray for it because it felt like you, you wanted, in my heart, I wanted someone. But that it felt like I was being led to some, something else. Or I wanted this way, but I felt like I was being led to this way. But anyway, okay, I said, when I go home, let's meet. And we, when we first met, all credits to him, he did ask my father to ask me out for a date. And that was a big, that was a big check. So, you know, it's, it's really right. <laughs> it, it was really right uh, when RV said it's very important to involve the family, especially because when you show, when you involve especially the parents, that's a very big respect. So that means the guy who wants to, to court you, although my friends from work said, oh, I've never heard that word before, court, courtship. They've never heard. But listen, you, that should not, you should not lose that. Courtship should always live. Because when, 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 when somebody's courting you and involving your family, that means they mean well and they are really sincere with what they're doing. Isn't it? Because it's not easy. Well, I haven't done facing 
some other parents because luckily I'm a female and I don't have to do that. <laughs> but I, I'm sure it's not, it's not easy to do. So that's really right. You have to involve the parents. Don't lose our culture. Don't lose the proper way, um, God's way of, of courtship. So he asked my father if he could take me out for a date. So we went out and everything clicked like we've, we haven't really lost communication for, for a long time. And so before I flew back, we didn't have a lot of time. But in that very small time, it, 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 it was very significant for me. Because I've, I've seen how mature he's, he is at that time and I've, I've felt his sincerity. And so I thought, when, when, he, when he courted me, he asked, if you're going to say yes to me, it's as good as yes for marriage. So I was like, hmm, okay. So I thought, I shouldn't just be giving the yes so easily. Because I don't want to give my word. And suddenly, oh, I don't like it. Uh, I can turn back. No. Because if you say yes, it's yes. And you should mark your word. That's for me anyway as a person. So I said, I have to give it another try. So I have to fly back here in the UK. And we had to um, communicate via Skype, Facebook, or I had to keep a globe phone, the Nokia small phone, just so he could text me there because that would be cheaper for him. And, you know, I'd have to reply to him in, in other, other ways because he was still busy um, studying um, then. So I thought, I, I have to really pray for this. So, because like what I said earlier, my heart felt low, like going this way, but I felt like somebody's guiding me. No, you have to go this way. So I thought, I really have to pray for this. So I thought, I told myself, whilst we are away until I see him again or until I make a decision, I need to get to know this person more. Because you cannot just say yes. Because I was... 25 then, 25 years old, then I thought it's not the time for me to just have fun in relationships. You know, if you want to commit, you have to consider like a lifetime commitment at that age. So I asked God for signs. I had three signs. I was that, I, I was that serious. I, I wanted the Lord to get involved because I said, if this is God given, then it would be the right decision. And if I decide to get married, then I know I'll be happy with my marriage if I know God has led me or it, it's God's will for us to be together. So it was really difficult. I, I thought because I wanted someone else there, because at that time, <laughs> there was somebody else that, that I have known for a long time as well. And I thought I really have to pray for this. So I prayed for signs that are quite, quite impossible. So obviously, um, I first the first sign I asked. I was here in, um, I was here in in England. The first sign that I've asked was that um, because my brother was getting married in Davao, where he was living, he didn't know any of my family. Then he hasn't met any of my family. So I said, Lord, if Vern's gonna meet my brother and they'll become friends, then that means. He's the one for me. But how could they meet and become friends when they haven't met ever before? My brother lives in a city nine hours away from Davao. And um, they've, they've, they've never seen each other, right, Dad? They have never seen each other. And then one morning, I was, on, I was in Newcastle back then. I was on the train, very cold winter, when my brother messaged me, Sis, I've just met Laverne. I was like, and it was like 6, 6.30 in the morning. It was very cold. I was on my way to work. And I was like, what? So I had to ring him. I said, what happened? How come, how come you've met? What happened was that I think my brother went to Davao City because they were arranging some wedding preparation, preparing for the wedding. And they met in the hospital. And Vern approached him and said, Kuya Alex, um, I'm Laverne. So he introduced himself. So he's, he's never really met my brother or my sister, my father before. Probably he's just seen him in the picture in, in Facebook. So he introduced himself and said, 
I'm Laverne. Oh, why are you here? Do you need a ride? And that's it then. They become friends. He drove my brother around Davao or where he was going. And I was like, oh, really? You're challenging me. So I said, okay then. Second sign. So I asked for, for a second sign. Months later, because I was still not convinced. How come, Lord? How come? How come? And then the second sign I asked, it was a bit selfish though. Um, maybe some of you youth will understand, although me thinking about it now, oh, what were you thinking? Why were you thinking like that? But at the time, this is, that's what I felt. And I thought, mm, in my past relationships, I felt like I've loved the other person more than it should have been balanced or two-way. So I said, Lord, if he's gonna tell me exact words of, I will love you more than you love me, then he's the person for me. Two minutes later, I received a Skype message, exactly the same words. It really brought chills, like literally it brought chills on my, on my skin. I was like, Lord, seriously? I was like, all right, okay. And the last one, the last um, question, did you turn it off that? I thought he turned it off. And the last, the last one I said, I said, Lord, if this, if Vern will, will go and ask for my parents' permission to court me, then he's the one for me. He's really that sincere. And so I think a few weeks later, um, I just found out that he traveled from Davao to Cagayan. That's about eight, eight to nine hours. Eight to nine hours bus or coach, coach ride. And um, he went to our house and actually asked permission from my parents to, to court me. Just, just court me. And I thought, all right then, I think three is enough. Three signs um, is enough for me. So then a um, few months later, I decided to go home and give him a yes. After, after all the prayers that I have done, after, after the communication, I thought maybe if I let him wait, I'll find out if he's really sincere. Maybe he'll stop courting me because, you know, we're long distance and it, it took a while before I said yes again. So maybe he'll, he'll give up this time. But he didn't. So I decided to go home and give him a yes. And since then, we've been um, in a long distance relationship. Well, officially as, as a couple. But it didn't take a long time. I think we had 10 years courtship, but we only have... After courtship, engagement... Seven months engagement, and then we got married. Life is too short. <laughs> so anyway, so, so that's um, uh, our, our history. And, you know, I, I, according to a 2013 study of um, the Journal of Communication, they said that people in long-distance relationships were, most, were more likely to share mini, meaningful thoughts and feelings. That's according to research. With their partners than those who were not. Apparently, couples in long-distance relationships tend to idealize their partner's behaviors, which leads to a greater sense of intimacy. Well, that's really all well and good. But then being in a long-distance relationship, being apart is definitely trying times. Even for couples who have a very strong foundation, how much more for us when we were not... We, I don't believe we have a strong foundation because we've never been really together as friends before we became a couple. So, so there are some, some tips that I have learned and I have I've, I've seen online about um, how to make a long distance relationship work. First is you have to be ready to work twice as hard as you did before. Because you know, they're not there. So for example, during um, special occasions, you know, if, if your partner is just there, it's just easy. Come on, let's meet here and I give you this, I give you that, or I give... But, but, but then when you're in a long-distance relationship, every time there's a special location, I have to connive with his sister or my sister to buy things for me. So for, for them to give it to him. So it, there's still a surprise. Even though you're not together, the element of surprise um, is still there. So you have to work twice. You need... You need to work. So even if you're not together, you still need to work toward having a very strong, solid base 
So to your relationship when you're in a long distance, you also have to do that when even if you're not in a long distance, but if you are, then you need to work to work twice. You need to find out when you should communicate, especially at that time he was in the Philippines, I was here, so so we have to agree at certain time where we should talk that I won't wake him up or make him bilar and also the same case for me. The second one is establish some ground rules about when you'll see each um, when you'll see each other. So at that time, I think when I was single, I was going home every six months, eight months. I was lucky. And then when I got married, I didn't go home till like four years. <laughs> four years after. But that's because um, it's still important that even you're away, there's something that you have to look forward um, as a couple. Um, the third one is communication. We had to communicate. At that time, he was studying in med school. So I was his alarm clock. So after I finish my work at 8, I get home around 20 past 8, 8.30. I then ring him to wake him up. So before, before he studies, before he studies, we'll talk for a bit first. Before um, he, will, um, he, will, he will study for his exam or for school, um, school paperwork. And also in the afternoon, I, have, I really have to work that my break would be the time before he goes to sleep. So sometimes I, I need to make sure I rush what I was doing at work safely though, safely. Um, so I could ring him or we could Skype before he goes to sleep. So like what I said earlier, there is an extra effort, especially if you don't live in the same country and you really have to adjust the, the different time zones. So communication is very important. And we also um, schedule Skype dates. So example, if I'm off, as much as possible, we spend time together, even not physically, but through Skype or even during the times I was traveling, I still need to find time and he needs to find time on his end as well. We really have to have that agreement as a couple that we have to make time to communicate. And, you know, sometimes texting is not enough. It's really different when you see the person's face and expression rather than just reading text because a lot of the time, nonverbal communication could get easily be um, misinterpreted. And another tip was that you have to think of the bigger picture. So I thought, yeah, I got into this relationship. What is our goal? What do we want to happen? Why are we in this relationship? So you have, when, when he told me, your yes will be as good as a yes for marriage. So obviously, when I said yes to him, it was... I was ready that this is for a lifelong commitment. Um, so we had to think of the bigger picture. Oh, I remember when, when I went back to the UK after I went home and said yes to me. Oh, there's flood in Aia. There was flood in Aia because I was pouring, <laughs> pouring my heart. I was crying. And, you know, especially if you're an OFW and you come back to the UK and you know the reality that you have to get back to, plus leaving your loved one behind. So now it's not just my family, but also my lover. <laughs> but, so I was really crying. Like I was, I was a baby. But then I have to, I had to comfort myself and console myself that there is a bigger picture and we won't always be like this. In God's perfect time, we will be together permanently. And another tip is that you have to celebrate things. Even if you're in a long distance relationship, that should not hinder you from, from celebrating events, occasion, or anything together. I know when we were in the relationship, I said, what's Mansari? We'll not, we'll not celebrate Mansari. Why do we celebrate Mansari? So at least now he learns to celebrate anniversary. So I never, I never expected <laughs> Mansari anymore, but, but anniversaries, we try to make it meaningful. Even when I was away, you know, I, 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 I like surprises as a person. I like surprising people. And so, you know, you still have those drama and whatever, um, things you do just to make the day meaningful. So that shouldn't stop you from, from, from celebrating together. Um, life is too short, so we have to um, celebrate things together even when we are in a long-distance relationship. And another thing, second to the last tip, um, 
we should not worry if every visit isn't perfect. So, you know, when you're in a long-distance relationship, for me at the time, it was very difficult because every time I go back to the Philippines, it's not just all about him. I also have to spend time with my family. Um, so we had to adjust. There were times he had to come and visit our house. There was also time I had to visit their family. Um, you, you have to adjust as a couple and you should not expect that, that, that in all parts of your relationship, it's just happy and lovey-dovey and, you know, kilig and everything. There would be trying times. And that's because that's part of a relationship. That, you know, even, even, even any relationship, even relationship as a parent and a child or between your siblings and your friends, go through something. You know, there are conflicts and it happens. And you just have to set your mind. It's part of the relationship as long as you could overcome it as a couple. So, some trips will be full of great memories and carefree times, and some will be full of fighting over big or small issues, and that's okay because it's part of the relationship. And what's important is at the end of the day, you'd be able to mend whatever um, conflicts you've had or disagreements you've got. And the last one I would really say that helped us survive in our long-distance relationship is prayer. You, you know, sometimes you would say, oh, that's overrated or that's a cliche when you say you have to trust God, you have to put your faith in God about it, you have to pray. And you, people would say, it's a cliche, it's overrated, but no, it is not. I think it is the most important, like what I said earlier, I really believed in my heart and in my mind that if it's a match made in heaven or if, if, if it is God who led you into that relationship, then he will, um, he will make that relationship prosper. I wouldn't say we have a perfect marriage, but I would say I am happy with my marriage. All praises to God. Because I believe we both prayed for it. And it's not only that. Even both I parents, I believe, really knelt in prayer to give us God's guidance. So my family prayed that we make the right decision. Verns, my in-laws, I know my mother-in-law prayed a lot. Um, that we would be guided in our decision. So it's not just even us, even our families included, in praying for us that hopefully it is our, our relationship, it's God's will for us. So remember, it's not a cliche, it's not overrated, it's the best thing to do, it's really to prepare. Because at the end of the day, marriage is something you don't want to make a mistake with your decision, you know? And, and for you to have that assurance is to have that faith and trust in God. Because like I said earlier, my heart wanted me to go this way, but I felt God's leading of want wanting me to go that way. And I thought, it's not just all about feelings and emotions. Because at the end of the day, love is not just about feelings and emotions. It's, it's a choice. It's a commitment that, that you, have, you have to make. And, and if you... If you let Jesus be part of your relationship. Even you would feel his guidance. You would feel him guiding you. Is this the right relationship for me? And if it's no, yes, it hurts. Yes, I've cried in the past because I was not in the right relationship. But then now I am grateful to him. I am very happy because I believe he has led me to the right relationship. So all those tears I had in the past and those regrets or I felt like, oh, it's a waste of time and investment and effort, this and that. But that's okay because that has honed me to becoming a better person into becoming the person that I am now. And it has... Um, honed my understanding about relationship. So youth always, always include Jesus in your relationship. It is not overrated. It is never a cliche because it is the best thing that you could do for yourself, for your family, and for your future partner. So earlier on, um, RV gave us two definitions of um, Two definitions of long distance relationship and it's not just relationship between the opposite sex or our, 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 our partners but also it's a relationship that we have with God so let's go back through the the tips and see if we could use these tips in building a good relationship with our Jesus it's I would say it's still a long distance because you don't see each other physically but surely you felt 
His presence, you know. That's, that's why it's faith because you don't see Him but you believe that He exists. You believe that He is there. So, the first tip was be ready to work twice as hard as you did before. Being a Christian is not an easy walk in the park as we all know. So, we really have to work hard. Especially now, we have come to the end times. So, we really have to, to, to work double in our efforts in reaching out to the people, in evangelizing, in ministering to others, and telling people about God's love. Tip two, establish some ground rules about, you know, as in, in your relationship. And God has given us what? The Ten Commandments for us to follow. And then co earlier I said you have to communicate regularly. So how do we communicate with our Lord? We have to communicate not just through reading of the Bible, but also through praying or, you know, we, we also come to church to fellowship with others and experience God through others' experiences. Um, and like I said earlier, it's not easy to be a Christian, especially these days. And I believe it's a lot more, could be a lot more pressure to the youth. Because the pressure is there to be of this world, you know. The temptation is there. It, it looks like, especially here in a foreign country, sometimes you see it's, it's just normal thing to do. But no, it isn't. That's why I said earlier, never lose the proper way of, of courtship. You know, love and courtship. You have to follow that. Although you see others, well, that's normal now. That's, that's the norm, you know. Why should we be different? So you have to think of the bigger picture yes we are suffering now because there is a bigger picture waiting for us a bigger reward waiting for us and then we celebrate everything my interpretation of this is whether we go through hardships or we go through the ups of our life we should always praise god i always take that every trials is an opportunity to be a witness of God's faithfulness. Um, in the past, I've had a lot of problems with our visa, but every time we, we face another problem with our visa, I just, I just say this to Jesus, thank you, Lord, for giving me another story to tell. Because then it would be an opportunity to share to others how God has been faithful in, in my life. And I think that would be a blessing and an honor to share it to others so they would also know how faithful God is in his promises. And like we said earlier, don't worry if every visit isn't perfect. You know, even in the church, the church is being um, tested a lot. So it, it doesn't mean that being in the church is just going to be very smooth. It's going to be happy fellowship all the time. There will come a time in the church that there will be conflicts. And that is just normal. Because who, who will the enemy focus at this time anyway? Would he focus on people that's already on his side? Or will he focus on people that's not on his side? So he would really focus on people. It's like a hunter. Would you hunt for somebody you've already taken or you've already hit, or would you hunt for something that you haven't hit yet? So you have to go for something. So it's the same for us as a church. Even though um, we face conflicts, we have problems in the church, don't dismay. Because at the end of the day, the church is not perfect. So if you see problems in church, that's why we, are, we ought to look up, not to look Horizontally, We have to look vertically and not horizontally because he should only be our source of, of strength and faith. And obviously, once again, let me reiterate that in building um, a strong relationship with God is our constant communication with him. And that's through the regular study of his word and um, regular prayers with him. Um, even in very, very little things, you know, make him your friend. Um, I remember yesterday I was taking a test and <laughs> I was really nervous because I felt like I didn't really prepare for the test. And so I, I, I thought to myself, um, I felt like high school all over again, you know, when you don't study for your exam and you take the exam anyway because you have to. And you know, that, that feeling that you get that you're not prepared to take the exam. Oh, every question I had to pray. I have to utter a prayer for every question that came out. I have to ask him for help. And it, that may seem a little thing, but every 
every little thing matters. And that's how it's the same with a relationship that you're building with, with a friend or with your husband, with your boyfriend, with your gr girlfriend. You just don't talk on, on big things. You know, it's important that you also engage even on little things or, or small um, events in your life. It's, it's good to share. And it's the same with Jesus. We have to share to him everything, whether it be small, it be big. We have to make him a part of our lives and a part of our system. Let me share to you um, a verse found in Colossians 2.5. For though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the firmness of your faith in Christ. So I hope that this, the tips that and my experience would help you in um, building a relationship with God, strengthening your relationship with Him. And also, if ever there would come a time that you would uh, engage in a long distance relationship, always remember, get Jesus involved. It is never a cliche to pray, have faith and trust in God's leading. Always put him in the center of your relationship. And I hope and pray that in every decision you would make, it, it, it would be God's will. And I'm sure that you will, be, you will be happy and you will be blessed. Good afternoon. I give my, I give my biggest thanks to Atijagi for giving that wonderful testimony. I think Atijagi has mentioned practically everything that's in my, in my A A Y. So I don't know. If, should I continue? The next, the next, um, subheading would be communication. Now everyone knows how important communication is, like Atijagi, Oliver. Uh, most of our experiences with Tito Laverne, it had it obviously had to do with communication. And that's not just for any type of relationship, but for, for practically everything. A means to continue the world is not just by love or money, but with communication also. One of the things I have here are little little tips and advices again. And after um, we after I will I will have another testimony about communication and that that will be done by yours truly. Okay, 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 guys. Okay, guys, okay, guys. Okay. The first one is talking about your needs and desires, especially when things get tough. And also listening to each other and understanding each other's views on different issues so that you can find common ground and keep souls happy. The next one is communication means being open and sincere with each other by expressing all and anything that may bother you or anything that may worry you. This includes personal problems, feelings about the relationship, doubts, and suspicions. suspicions. And this, one, this one's really important as um, so, some of the, if you're new to any type of relationship, sometimes you want to keep the relationship just happy, just all positive, all rainbows and ponies, all sweets. You don't want to. You don't want to express what is troubling you. That may lead to, like, like he says, like he says here, it may lead to, it may lead to problems. So a good relationship is not just all about positive positives and all about being happy all the time. It also means being sad. As long as you are there for each other and that person is there for you during those sad times. The next one is communication means getting to know each other by talking about your preferences, your past experiences, your views and opinions on different matters. The next one is, communication means building trust and respect in your relationship by getting to know each other's boundaries. Now, this is, this is very, very important. As you, as you can see by boundaries, boundaries don't just mean uh, feelings one or whatnot, but it can also mean physically. So, as I said with the Adventists, we physically know the boundaries of this. So, this is, extre is extremely important. Then, the, the last one is creating a connection. It's creating a connection between you and you and two by expressing your feelings towards one another. The text that I found here that can relate to all of this 
is, fo- is found in the first one, James chapter 1, verse 19. It says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, but slow to speak and slow to anger. Ephesians chapter 4, 29 says, Let no corrupt, corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as, such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may grace though to those who hear. Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Now, for, for a, a, little, a little short testimony, not as, lo- not as long as Tita, ja- Tita Ati Jags, but I will keep my best to make it short. Um, it's <laughs> um, a communication. There's one, thing, there's one thing that I can look back in my relationship with Via that I can say that I can be proud of, that I didn't know I could, we could keep going, is that um, practically, practically every single day and every single night for three years and six months, we always, we always talked, not just simple text, but an actual phone call. Every, every, there have been really nights and days that we, have, we haven't talked at all. Even basic communication such as how was your day, something boring as that, something mundane as that, it can, it can mean something as to the feeling of someone is actually, even the most boring and mundane things, someone, someone is willing to listen and to, willing to take time to listen to your, to your boring and mundane, mundane things. So that, that, to me, that to me is very important and that's a little tip. I know it's very hard to do that as the time of being busy with work, school, or have your family and friends that, are, that can get in the way. But for me, communication is one of the most important things to keep a long distance relationship going. So little tips and advice, kids. To, to, wake every, to wake everyone up, I think we will enter our Bible game. This will be led to us by Via Vishal and Shalei. It's, it's about communication as well. So can the two come up here, please? I think, I think everyone is just tired after the, the first Sabbath, after camping. So I hope this, this will wake everyone up. And I think the kids have left. Can, so, can some of the kids come back? They went outside. Have you heard of the game called Bible Telephone? How many people? We will try to make um, just two teams. We will try to make two teams with seven, seven persons or people in each team. And can those contestants go to the end of these, of these rows on my right and my left? So I think we're, some, can someone call the, the dads, the, the parents can join as well. And I would, I would like the youth to join as well. But most importantly, someone call the little kids to participate in this, please. The Bible that we are going to use is the King James Version. It's a King James Bible. I think we have, we have two for, both, for one for each team. So the cont- can the contestants um, sort, sort themselves out? Seven in each. Where's everyone? One, two, three. Where, where, sh- where shall I lay with the answer sheets? I think she's coming. Oh, there she is. Come on, youth. Just join this thing.
Is that King James? No, we've got, we've got King James, please. Oh yeah, we have we have the we have the two King James version Bibles here with us right now. The only people that will be holding the Bible are the people at the back. Yeah, you know how to play this game, right? Bible Bible telephone. Where? Where? Yeah. Yes. Say it. You have to say it. Okay. And you have to say it to us. Especially to Ativia. No. You have to run up here and say it, whisper it. Okay. No, no, no. They run up here and then, and then they, say, they say it to us. Try make the distance even. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. I think you have to even out the groups because more of this group is kids. I think it's kind of unfair for the other group. See, 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 see. I think Jojo can join that team. One, two, three, four, five. There's five in that team, isn't there? One, two, three, four, five. Four, five, six, seven. We need, we need two more. Just two more. I know, I know most of the kids are on holiday, but let's make, let's make use of this to make it well. Lance. Which one? Oh, Lance One. Hello, Lance One. I know you can hear me. I know you can hear me. <laughs> VJ, where's the, where's the, where's the team? Well? Did they go on holiday? VJ. Come on, Roxanne. Come on, Roxanne. Shall? Yeah, get the Bible, then come up here. What is it? I told them to just as soon as they do, they run up here and tell us no shouting out. Because we can't hear. You stay here? No, I'll tell them. No, we'll, we'll, we'll announce the words and then they say. Uh, isn't that how it goes? Yeah. So I'm pretty sure everybody knows the mechanics of the game, right? Uh, so basically, the last two people at the very back would have the Bible, and we'd say um, a verse, and um, you have to find that verse. And for example, we'd say the f um, Genesis 1-1, for example. So what is the third word from the beginning? So you have to, have to find that in the Bible. And whatever that word is, you have to um, communicate it to your teams. And the first person here in the front will have to um, Run up here. No, you have, they have to run up and tell us. Okay. So that it avoids shouting. And then after that, everybody has to rotate. So everybody has to, has to have a go at the back. The team is, that's team one. And that's team two, okay? Okay. You ready? You can announce it. You can announce it. So you announce it. So you to announce it. So you to okay, are we, is everybody ready? People at the back especially. Can I ask um, people to face front? Because I know you could hear from and, other and people. And the, keep the Bible closed. <laughs> okay, face front everybody. Okay, for our first, first word, it is found in Job 37.20. Job 37.20. It is the eighth word. It is the eighth word from the beginning. Eighth word from the beginning. Hello? 
Job 37, 20. Eighth word from the beginning. Oh, Char, Char. Char, we sit down, Char. No, no, you're supposed to pass. Not, not. Speak. That's correct. So team one gets the point. What was, what was the answer? Speak. Speak. Rotate. Okay, rotate, please. The, the, per, the, peop, uh, the person at the front has to go at the back and go forwards. Rotate, rotate. Rotate, rotate. Okay, second word is found in Leviticus 15, 26. Leviticus 15, 26. The 21st word from the beginning. <laughs> Leviticus 15, 26. 21st word from the beginning. 21st word. From, oh, 15, 26. 15, 26. 21st word from the beginning. Separation. Separation? That's the right word. Is correct. Come team on, one. Come on, team two. Whee! Come on, team two. You have to come catch on, up. Team two. Team two. Oh. Oh. So, so, someone help Kian. Who wants to? Atisara, can you help Kian? Atisara, come on. Yay. Okay, third word, the next word is found in... Are we, re are we ready? Are you ready? Okay. Face front, please, everybody. Face front. Um, Second Samuel 3.17. Second Samuel 3.17, fourth word from the beginning. Okay. Second Samuel 3.17. 317, fourth word from the beginning. Communication. Well done. Oh. <laughs> well done, team two. Well done. So the score so far is two for team one and two, one to team two. Two points is one, two, 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 one. Okay, are you ready? Everyone face front. Next word is found in Ezekiel 22.10. Ezekiel 22.10. Third word from the last. 22.10. Ezekiel 22.10. Third word from the last. Part. Well done. Part. That's correct. Okay, that's a tie for both teams. Okay. Are you ready, you guys? At the back. Next word is found in Romans five four. Romans 5, 4. Second word from the beginning. Lance to your face in the front. <laughs> everyone face in the front, face in the front, everyone. Romans 5, 4. Second word from the beginning. I could hear. <laughs> Guys, be more quiet. Be more quiet. Oh. Patience. So, 
Who took the mic first? Who took the? Uh, but who? But so 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 team team one. Guys, be more be more quiet because the other team can hear you. Say patience. Yeah, it was so it's so loud, guys. I could hear you say patience. It's so loud. Um, we have deliberated and we will give the we will give the point to team one. I'm sorry, JJ. Okay, so three, two, so far. Wait, what was it? Team one. Okay, are you guys ready at the back? Are you guys ready? Everyone, face front, please. And okay, the the next word is found in Ephesians two eight. Ephesians 2, 8, 12 word from the last. Ephesians 2, 8, 12 word from the last. <laughs> it's two, eight. Ephesians 2, 8, 12 word from the last. Twelve yeah. word from the Twelve last. Word from the last. Two, two eight. eight. Twelve word from the last. <laughs> Faith. Yeah, that's the Faith. correct word. That's three all. No, no, no. Oh, one. No, no. Yeah, three. What? No, no. It's three, three. What number are we? We're um, not really on the mark. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, it's, it's, a it's supposed to be a tie. Now. Oh, it's supposed to be a tie. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay, are you guys ready at the back? The next word is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Seventh word from the beginning. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Seventh word from the beginning. Oi! Steadfast. <laughs> well done, that's correct. That's score from team one. Okay, rotate. Rotate the potato. <laughs> okay, are you guys ready at the back? Okay. Okay. Uh, Psalms eighty nine thirty six. Psalms eighty nine thirty six. Fourth word from the beginning. Thirty six. Fourth word from the beginning. Eighty nine thirty six. Fourth word from the beginning. Enjoy. Oh, well that's correct. Thank you. That's one. Ooh. What's the score? Oh. Score. Um, group two have three points. Group one have five points. Come on, group two. Okay, are you ready at the back? Face forward, guys. The next word is found in Proverbs 5.19. Proverbs 5.19. 21st from, word from the last. 
21st from the last Proverbs 5.19. 5.19. 21st word from the last. Yes, from the last. Loving. Yes, so well done. Correct. Okay, guys, this is the last two. And instead of announcing it by with words, you now have to act it. So the first person who acts it. Okay. You have to pass it on through charade. Yeah. And the first, uh, the people at the front will you have, have to, to act it. Everyone has to face front so, so they can't see. So if you want to rearrange yourself, you can do, you can do so now. If you want to rearrange yourself, but the, who wants to act first, who wants to read the Bible. No, no, no. The first, the first oh, sorry. person acts. And um, we will ask, we will ask um, Tita Lovely to guess the action. So you'll be the judge, Tita. You have to guess the action, the word. Oh no, the, the, the group will already know because they've been passing it along until the front. So Tita Lovely will, will guess. Is that okay? The adults, the, the, the supporters will guess. You just here at the front? Hmm? No, you can you can rearrange yourself now because this is the last two. Yeah, this is this is the last two. You can the best actors at the front and the best Bible readers at the back. That kind of thing. No race, race tita. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, tita, yeah. The adults as well, tita Jaggi also. So it's just charades. So what's the one? Well, no, basically what it is, um, you still have to do the looking in the Bible for the words. And then instead of passing it as a word, you have to pass it as a charade. Do you get it? Okay, guys, this is... So, so my, okay, my, my apology. This is, this is an I Love Man game. So I, I, I mis, misunderstood. So I apologize. You pass it on as an action word, not like as a word. That's why everyone, everyone should stand up and face the front. So, and then, um, yeah, we'll just tap them if you have the word and if you act it out. Yeah, you have to follow how they act it. <laughs> you got this. Okay, are we ready? The, Bi the Bible readers at the back, are you ready? You can see what? You can see what? You can see what? Oh, wow, wow. Oh. And then 
Let's stop the camera. Let's stop the camera. Nice. Okay, guys, are we ready? Yeah. Group two, are you ready? Okay. Are you all ready? Guys, face forward. Again, you have to charade your answer coming to the front. Okay. Exactly. Mm, okay. First Timothy 1.11. First Timothy 1.11, last word. First Timothy 1.11, last word. So the front people at the front. You can have do to guess anything the for this is. act. You have to guess what the charade was. You have being to guess. Yeah, can, you can use anything, or you can use someone to act out this word. Because I think it's a bit hard to act out actually. Last word. Face front, please. Face front. Except for the person that's being passed on the message. Sign language or yeah, you can do anything. The, the um, letter, hand signal. American hand sign language. No, no, no. you can't mouth it. Charades, just your actions. Lance, you have to guess what that is. What's your answer, Lance? Right. Oh, gosh. Hello. Writing. That. Writing. <laughs> All right. That. The one word. I five. Ten letters. Right. 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 Uh, writing good. Is it writing? Writing. Writing? No. No. You have That's any guesses, Dana? Popo. Massage. Massage. <laughs> yeah, go. <laughs> oh, no come on, come on, team. No guesses? Who will get this point? Faith? Is it Faith? Is it? Is it Faith? Nope. Nope. My apologies. Okay, um, a clue is it's, it's five letter word. It's a five letter word. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. F First Timothy chapter 1, verse 11. And it's the last word. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 11. It's a five letter word. Lance, are you playing the accordion? <laughs> Okay. Did I get, did I get, did I get it wrong before? No, they put the first word instead of last. What about oh, the script? God knows. Oh, five letters. Hmm? Should we tell them to the partner? Hmm? Do you want no. them to the partner? Yeah. Blind. 
Blind? Did you say that? Okay. Oh. Oh, 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 microphone, microphone here. Mic yeah, you got correct. No, no. <laughs> okay. What? Why did he move, Michelle? Why? Why did you move? You stay here. Why did you move? Why, why did you move? Which one won? Which one won? We said last word. Last word. But hey, don't worry, don't worry, because the winner for this, the the one who got a point, is group one. The word was trust. The tr Okay, guys, this is the last point. This point is worth two, two points because they have six points and these guys have five. So it's worth two points. Yes. Do you want to say it? No, they have to stand up again. Yeah, stand up, guys. No, I mean, it's the same mechanic as the last one. Everyone, please face forward because. Okay. okay, the last word is Hebrews 13 1. Second word from the last. Hebrews 13 1. Second. Hebrews 13 1. Second word from the last. <laughs> Hebrews 13.1. Second word from the last. Love. Why is that? Love. Well done. That's the word. <laughs> oh, oh. Group two, what was your word? No. Well done, well done, host. Well done, thank you, Michelle and Chalet. Thank you for that wonderful game. Thank you, CC, everyone. Well done, guys, well done. So on to this part of the AY will be about our relationship with God himself. So if everyone can get their seats. Okay, let's start. Patience and perseverance. James 1, chapter, um, James chapter 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God promised to those who love him. And for another, another testimonial, we'll be coming from another LDR relationship right now. And that, will, that is Sarah Galofi. Good afternoon, everyone. Just as what Ate Jog said, um, this was very last minute. Arvi actually asked me after divine worship. So till now, I actually have no clue what I'm going to say. But he did ask about patience and perseverance in an LDR. Um, for me, patience is, is very difficult because I'm a very impatient person. 
So I've, my, what my mom always says, ever since I was 16, she's always said, I feel bad for the man you're going to marry because you're a very impatient person. But to be honest, um, when I did get into LDR, I did learn how to be patient because I realized that nothing will ever work out without patience. For example, he works um, in a hospital and I'm in university. So we didn't have a lot of time to talk. And for me, I'm, very, I'm a very clingy girlfriend. So I want constant attention. I want, you know, all of that. But, <laughs> but throughout, it's been almost two years now. And throughout the two years, I learned that um, I, l I learned a lot. <laughs> Stop, man. <laughs> I learned that, no, Clay actually taught me how to be patient because he's the most patient person I have ever met, even though I constantly annoy him, even though I constantly nag, nag, nag. Why are you not calling me? Why are you not texting me back? He's calm, you know? So that's when I learned that I should be more like him and learn how to be calm and patient when you're in a relationship. And with the perseverance, to be honest, um, I can't really, I don't really know what to say about perseverance because um, with a, in a relationship, you do have to persevere if you want to make things work. You know, if one person easily wants to give up, and the other person keeps strong, then it's not going to work out, you know. But um, I remember in my la in my AYS, my AY last two weeks ago, um, I did say something about patience, which actually still clings on to me till now. Is the Greek word pa of patient comes from the two words long tempered. If you're a patient, you're slow to anger. You endure personal wrongs without retaliating. You bear with others' imperfections, faults, and differences, and you give them time to change. You also give them time to make room of the mistakes without coming down too hard on them. And being in an LDR, I have learned how to be selfless, and I learned how to be selflessly in love and in also patient at the same time. And I want to share this quote to you, with you guys. Um, it says, a moment of patience in a moment of anger saves you a hundred moments of regrets. So what I've learned as well that you can't, re when, you're re in, when you're mad and when you're angry and when you're annoyed, you can't just blurt out all the things that you want to say. You can't just say, say all those angry thoughts and because you might end up hurting the other person. So with me now, I, every time I'm annoyed at him, you know, because I'm, I'm always annoyed at him, I just stay calm and be like, okay, he's like, what's wrong? He's like, Mahal, what's wrong? And I'm just like, give me 10 minutes to rethink my thoughts before I say what is wrong. Because I don't want to say, oh, you're doing this wrong. Nah, 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 nah. I want, because you, can't, you don't really have a clear mindset when you're so emotional. So I just, what I learned is that when you're in a relationship, even if it's not long distance, you should always stay calm and try to stay calm in situations where it's difficult. Because you don't want to go on and hurt the other person. If that makes sense. <laughs> But yeah, that would be my um, oh my God, my testimony on patience and perseverance. Thank you. I give a biggest thanks to Adisera for that wonderful testimony about patience and perseverance. Um, I was going to use a, I think a. Um, an example of wait, where's it, where's it, where did everyone go? Okay, let's 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 keep going. I was gonna use an example from the um, of a couple who had a long wait, fourteen years for um, to be exact, and that couple was Jacob, the story of Jacob and Rachel. For those who, 
for those who don't know Jacob's story, I'm just going to give you a quick overview. I'm just, we're just going to focus on the part of where he waited for 14 years, to be exact. Jacob fell in love at first sight with the beauty. Hello? With the beauty of Rachel. So much that he asked Rachel's father, Laban, if he could marry her. Even though Laban was very happy, he told Jacob to work for him for seven years. And then worked again for another seven years. So in total, Jacob waited for 14 years for Rachel. Now, you may wonder why I chose this story from the Bible as an example for an LDR. Even though technically there weren't, there weren't long distance because they were literally next to each other. They could literally see each other. They could feel or touch each other if they wanted to. But because of this, because of, um, he, because of Laban, Laban's term, which was the, Jacob had to work for him for seven years and 14 years in total. Jacob couldn't do all those things even though Rachel was just there in the grasp of his hands. Now, you may wonder why I chose this story from the Bible as an example for, of LDR. Um, it's not about the distance, but what it is, is actually in the way or what is separating them. We can relate to this story to our own relationship with God because everyone here is practically in a long distance relationship with God himself. Even though we physically cannot see or even feel God himself, we know and believe he is there, back to trust and faith. We know that God himself is there. He is omnipresent, meaning God literally could be right next to us if we wanted to, and then right next to every one of us um, at the same time. Even, even um, representing God will be his guardian angels, which is always right next to us. That's not, long, that's not really long distance. God is literally could be next to us, say, in times of need, in times of we need a shoulder to cry on, um, God could be in the form of our parents or of our friends. If, say, um, something to do with you have an argument with your loved one or you are really um, emotionally in pain, God could be here with us in our hearts. And an ex another example would be during, say, our exams, God himself could be right here in our minds. All we, all we need to do is literally just ask him to be there. That's all we need to do. Nothing more and nothing less. We know he is there and we believe he is there. He is omnipresent, meaning God can be wherever or everywhere at once. God is right here in our hearts and minds and, our, and his God, your angels, is beside us the whole time. It says here in Genesis, Genesis chapter 31, verse 49, the Lord watches between you and me when we are out of one another's sight. Yet is this distance physically far away from us? No. It is it no, it isn't, as we literally do not know the exact measurement of how far or near God is. All we know is that He is literally beside us, guiding and protecting and blessing us. And all we need to do is to keep the faith and persevere till God finally comes physically. And Jacob might have waited for 14 years for Rachel, but we could we, we could possibly wait our whole entire lives and still the waiting could outlive us. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7 says, Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Amen. <laughs> For the last part, God and distance. Um, can you all can you all read with me the these Bible Bible texts, please? Three, two, one. Luke eighteen, one. He told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. Um, okay, one at a time. Sorry. It it's so easy to lose heart and faith in a relationship when you are not able to see your significant other every day, as most couples can. We get caught up in the here and now and how hard things are right now that we forget why we got into this relationship in the first place and where we want it to go. This verse provides two ways to strengthen your faith and be able to endure hard times, which is read the scripture and pray. A second one, everyone with me? Genesis chapter 31 verse 49 
and Mizbas, for he said, The Lord watches between you and me when we are out of one another's sight. One of the hardest things about being apart in a relationship is not being able to be there for your significant other when they need you and not having them be there for you when you need them. It is the most help helpless feeling in the world when they are struggling and there is absolutely nothing you can do to help. But God can. God watches over both of you and protects both of you so that you do not need, you do not need to worry. Release this stress to God. Let go and he will be there where you cannot be. The third one. 1 Corinthians chapter Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Like I said, long distance relationships are hard, but true love provides the power to make it through. The love you have for your significant other makes it possible to bear the distance. Believe it, believe it will get easier and it will be worth it in the end. Hope for the best without allowing fear to creep in and endure the hard times for our future together. Practice these traits of love daily and keep them in your heart and your relationship, if rooted in deep true love, will prosper no matter how many miles are between you. Okay, the fourth one. Colossians chapter 2 verse 5. For though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit. Rejoicing to see your good order and the firmness of your faith in Christ. Never underestimate the power of the Spirit. Although you cannot be with your boyfriend or girlfriend every day, you can be with them in spirit. Ask questions, call often, write letters, have those deep conversations, stay up late on the phone every once in a while. Do what it takes to feel their presence. In addition, notice how Paul is rejoicing to see their lives in order and their faith strengthened. The same should be true in your relationship. Make a point to rejoice in others, other successes, answered prayers and blessings, and continually work to strengthen the faith of one another. Get this one. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 8 says, Trust in the Lord. This verse is very well known by many, yet is so of often overlooked during hardships. Dating from a distance can so often lead to questions of why, and this is toxic. Why is God keeping us apart? Why do other couples get to be together? Why is this so hard? The list goes on and on. This verse is a reminder that it does not matter why, God, why because God is in control. You do not need to understand that why, you simply need to trust God. Acknowledge him and he will show you your next step. Just take it one day at a time. Additionally, this verse calls you to fear the Lord and turn away from his evil. Although it may be tempting to just take the easy way out or justify our, your sinful actions with just this once or it makes sense or he or she will just never know, God is calling you to a higher standard. If you have made the commitment to make this relationship work, do not allow yourself to get into tem tempting situations and make very, every effort to do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. Matthew chapter 19, verse 6. I am aware that this verse is referring to the marriage, but it has greater power in empowering those in long distance relationships to persevere on. If God has brought the two of you together for a reason and your relationship is on, honoring to him and bringing him glory, then what can get in the way? Nothing. If God wills it to be, then it will be. With this in mind, always remember that there is an end to this pain and that it will all be worth it. And if both of you are putting in the effort and God is in the middle, nothing can separate your relationship. And the last, and the last one, Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 6.
lastly, the how to love verse. In different words, this verse can be summarized like so. If your relationship is Christ-driven, Christ-focused and made easier through the power of Christ within you, then try your best to do these things and Christ will be glorified. Work together and love wholeheartedly. Focus on your significant other more than yourself and value them over yourself. Work every day to take on the characteristics and humility of Christ himself and always look out for your others. And I would like to end this AY for everyone to stand and read uh, Matthew chapter 19 verse 26 with me. Stand please. Amen. And can I call the choristers to have a closing song? For our closing song, shall we remain standing and sing God's Wonderful People?
Let's bow our heads for prayer. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, O oh Lord, we thank you once again for another beautiful Sabbath day that you have blessed us with, O oh Lord. We thank you for those who are here today, O oh Lord, who attended um, this AY, O oh Lord. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for helping me through the AY presentation, O oh Lord. Thank you for the words that are from you and came out through my mouth, O oh Lord. And may it be understanding to those who, who are in attendance or who are listening in the um, live stream, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh Lord. We bless those who are already away from here and or on their way home or still out um, in holiday, O oh Lord. May you bless them, keep them safe, guard them and be with them, O oh Lord. And as we continue the rest of this Sabbath day, O oh Lord, bless us and keep us safe and wherever we may go, O oh Lord. We thank you for all of these things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless everyone and thank you. Happy Sabbath.